Congress is famous for passing these omnibus bills where we cram 12 spending bills into one and then add 10 or 20 other things that have nothing to do with those 12 spending bills. And then you take one vote and they would hold over your head uh, that you would be blamed for shutting down the government if you didn't fund all of the things, including the things you didn't like. The swamp, the critters who are here, they master process. They use process to maintain the status quo. So there's certain committees that are really important, Ways and Means and the Rules Committee, because the Rules Committee ends up setting up what you can and can't do. And through my time here in Washington, the type of folks I like to work with, they're usually frozen out of those top leadership positions. Well, there's one rule that we had where you would get three days to read a bill. Well, of course, they figured out how to cheat on that pretty quickly. They would introduce the bill at 11.59 p.m. That counts as a day. If it touches the day by one minute, the parliamentarian decided. And then you would have one day, a, a real full 24 hours. Then for the third day, well, if we hurried up and voted in the morning, that counted as the third day. So they took the three-day rule and compressed it into about 26 hours or 30 hours. To keep us from cheating on that, they changed it to an honest-to-goodness 72-hour rule, where the clock starts and now you got to take 72 hours. Well, they just suspend that rule every week and never held to it. The Freedom Caucus was founded back under Speaker Boehner's time. These are people like Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows. They were getting locked out of the system and they just didn't want to go and vote for a spending bill. They wanted to actually change it. We had voted differently on a particular bill, uh, actually on a rule where Jim had voted one way and I had voted another. And uh, I came out the next morning, I said, Jim, if I'd known you were going to vote this way, I, I would have voted with you. And it was really just, there was not a whole lot of organization. We wanted to find people who were willing to vote against the rule of their own party and their own speaker. Jim and I called four people a, a piece. At the end of the day, uh, nine of us were the founding members. And so the Freedom Caucus came together as a group of members that said, hey, if we stand together, we're going to be able to actually challenge spending. We're going to be able to challenge process. Uh, I think what you'll find in Freedom Caucus is members that do things not with the view of the next election, but of, with a view of doing right by the American people, doing what they said they were going to do, and do what they think needs to be done to save the great republic of America. So John Boehner was one of the people who was elected as a reformer. So in theory, he should have been terrific, but what ended up happening? Well, he came along, DC co-opted him, nothing changed. So now you have the House Freedom Caucus say, we are determined to do things differently. On July the 28th of 2015, uh, I filed a thing called the motion to vacate the chair. At that point, if you had Googled it, no one um, could really tell you what it was. I found it in the Jefferson Manual. And when I, I filed it, it was really supposedly the end of my political career. And yet, during that battle, uh, Freedom Works was, was there with me and they uh, showed up. No one thought you could ever topple a speaker. It was just impossible. And I remember getting text messages from members being like, hey, could you magnify this message? Can you keep your activist calling? And eventually the pressure got to the point where Speaker Boehner's position became untenable. And he was actually a casualty of the failure for Republicans to address spending.